If you were to do a search right now on YouTube for something like how to pose, there will be a lot of search results returned. And the advice sometimes is geared more towards women than men. And there's a ton of great content out there as well that is geared towards men, but I feel like they tend to talk more about how to look good in general, like clothing or, you know, things that are not necessarily about posing that involves lighting or photography composition. So I want to take the time to make a video that is focused primarily on posing. These are basically um, guidelines that I've come up with. They are not rules by any stretch of the imagination, but just sort of general themes that I have learned from my own experience. Tip number one, place yourself slightly above the lens or higher to signify authority. If you are in front of the camera, you do have control over your position in relation to the camera. So right now I've got the lens like just at my chin right here and powerfulness this theme is basically all about shooting from the nose down you want to imply authority through this and you can do it in subtle ways by just putting it slightly below the eye or you can take it to the extreme and we can take it take a look at some examples right here now this kind of perspective is very typical i even go so far as saying stereotypical of that vlogger selfie stick look the rationale behind this is that, well, if you shoot from a higher perspective, then it slims the body down. But I think that it also has another unwanted effect in the case of shooting men in that it makes the subject look smaller. So if we shift our perspective down, you can already feel the difference. It's, it's really kind of hard to put into words. So I hope that this uh, does a lot more showing rather than telling here. And we can take a look at another example where we're now on top of the wall, but Natan is in a different position. He's squatting down. But it really makes him look kind of like a child here when we're up above him. And again, we shift our perspective down to about chest level here. He looks like the adult that he is. And we can take this to an extreme by getting down even further. So you can see how versatile this concept is. It's not just necessarily about shooting from the eyes down at nose level or at chin level, but you can really push this. Tip number two, bend your limbs to create sharp angles in your composition. And the other thing that's important to keep in mind here is again your relationship between the camera and the subject whether it's you or somebody else so you want to make sure that you adjust the perspective of the camera so that the angle of whatever limb is bent is visible and this is in contrast to that common phrase that we hear and that we use all the time feminine curves so if the opposite of feminine is masculine then that must mean that the opposite of curves is sharpness or angularity or squareness or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so if we take a look at the example, we've got Natan squatting here down on the bench, and technically he's got pretty much all of his limbs bent. But if you were to take a closer look at the overall shape of his body, particularly in relation to the lens, as I was speaking about earlier, you can see this general kind of roundness. I'm able to draw this circle around him almost perfectly and that goes counter to what i just talked about previously which is you know this curvy shape which is more evocative of a feminine feel and you know it's kind of nice to break those tropes or stereotypes if you will but that's not what this video is about is it so if we look at the next example and compare the two you can already see the difference between what you see on the left and on the right so let's take a closer look at what we've got here and if you start drawing the lines around the angles you can see every single limb here is bent with the camera being angled to a different degree there's a different kind of relationship that comes forward you can really start to see the angles come through tip number three fill up your physical space with confidence so this theme, bigness, is all about opening up the body. It's about owning the space that you're in and just 
basically being a boss. And it's something that I cannot claim 100% ownership of because it's actually a concept that I got from another photographer by the name of Jeff Rojas. He uh, wrote this book called Posing Men, which is an excellent book. And if you want more information about how to pose men for photographs in addition to just the stuff that I'm talking about here, he goes into a lot more detail. So let's go back into examples. Here we've got Natan lying down on the bench this time. And I would say, you know, technically speaking, he is taking up space here, but we can do so much better. So first of all, we have him with his hands on his belly, which is a little bit kind of vulnerable looking. It's, it's almost as if he's trying to protect himself in some sort of way. So if we just make a few adjustments here, notice, for example, his legs. So it was his right leg that was up and kind of blocking his left leg. So there was another layer of kind of like visual protection there. So this time I had him put his right leg, which is the camera facing leg on the ground. So now in a way it's grounding himself and owning a little bit more of that space there. And I had him lift up his head just slightly. So he's interacting a bit more with the viewer, but his hands are still on his belly. So we can change that by opening up his upper body and having his right hand just kind of lay there on the side of the bench. And his left hand is up at the top of the bench, but you don't really see it. So that's something we can change as well by bringing it more forwards and into the view of the camera. Now we're able to see both of his hands. And this is a huge difference from the original shot that we started off with. So on the left hand side, you know, he's kind of like turned in on himself, he's furled in and on the right hand side, his body's so much more open and he's really taking up that space and owning it. Tip number four, take on a physically dynamic movement or action and shoot in the middle of it. Now you wanna be subtle about this basically because if you take it to the extreme and you do something really theatrical, it's, it's very easy to end up in cheesy stock photo territory. And that's fine if that's what you want to create or if you don't mind that kind of end effect. But if you wanna create art, then I would recommend that you really tone it down and you keep it subtle. So we're back at the wall with Natan this time sitting on it and he's just looking off into the distance very pensively. And it's a beautiful shot, but it demonstrates the opposite of what I want to talk to you guys about basically. So if we shift a few things around, we have in this shot instead Natan leaning forward and looking straight into the camera, we see a full view of his face this time. And it actually kind of looks like he's about to jump off of it. So it introduces that element of, oh my God, what's about to happen. And there's that kind of dynamism in there. And if we move down to the ground level at the wall still, so in this case, I had him just kind of push himself just slightly off against the wall. And it looks like he is about to throw a punch, but just in a very subtle way because his hands are not clasped in this case, they're open. And we can go back up onto the wall. And this is an example of how you can draw inspiration from martial arts. It essentially shows a toned down version of a kick and punch with his leg only just slightly bent and the punching hand raised, but not necessarily all the way to the chin like you would have in Olympic boxing. If we take those kind of movements and we tone them down, then you get this really cool kind of shot that I actually feel pretty proud of. So, you know, it's funny because what started off as this kind of fun, admittedly superficial tutorial on how to look good in photos ended up becoming a bit of a meditation for me on what does it even mean to be a man. My favorite definition of manliness, it comes from the ancient Romans. Manliness meant what came from the word virtus, and that meant to be a virtuous man. And you know what's fascinating to me is that when I was younger, I actually disassociated from and even rebelled against a lot of the traditional ideas and definitions of masculinity that I always thought of as toxic. There's a lot of things that, uh, that's wrapped up in masculinity that we should leave in the dustbin of history. Things like racism and sexism and homophobia. But we should take what's good from our past, what it means to be an honorable man, and create something new. 
as I got older, very, very slowly, I started to realize that, you know what, there is such a thing as a basic, fundamental, and actually healthy definition of masculinity. One that is timeless and spans cultures and is fairly universal. And so for the Romans, being a manly man meant developing attributes of courage, of self-reliance, of industry, of hardihood, of nurturing friendships. While I present all of these concepts as part of that basic definition, I encourage you to take everything here with a healthy grain of salt. Play around with them, try them on, challenge them. I've learned that if I have to define what it means to be a man for myself, I'm going to do it on my own terms. And I encourage you to do the same. <laughs>